Godzilla could not be more chill right now. Look at him hanging loose. So I went to a DIY store today and I had three things that I had to get for the house and obviously I walked away with one thing that I didn't need and that was another jar. Now I saw this jar and I couldn't resist. I had so many ideas and I thought oh my god let's create an awesome environment and the little one agreed. She loved it too. Look at that. So I had to spend the rest of the day obviously getting inspiration now, going about my business, going to the park, going for a walk, clearing my head, doing the usual Saturday, Sunday life admin stuff we all love to do, walking our dogs, our kids. Now when I was a kid I used to love turning over logs and looking at all the critters underneath and this is almost therapeutic for me which is really really weird and I know some of you out there will be like oh that's really really weird but it's just therapy for me and looking at a river, running water. Today was not the greatest day, but I wouldn't let anything stop me to build my terrarium dream. Now this is not like any other terrarium, this is going to be unique. Now I had to do everything inside, so I started with the base layer, right? So this is going to be the drainage layer, and I'm just using a simple pebble layer. That's all I'm doing. Now the next tool I'm going to need is very key, it's the shovel. Now I'm going to get some soil from outside, some potting mix, I'm going to add some activated charcoal. Now charcoal is going to do a lot of wonderful things with the soil, it's going to reduce odour, it's going to neutralise all the bad chemicals and basically going to keep the environment nice and clean. What's it saying? You gotta keep your station clean. You gotta keep your workstation clean. Now, to go out and to find some awesome vegetation, some plants to throw in the terrarium. The terrarium's gonna look sharp, it's gonna look good. So I came back to the fern moss. This grows in my garden. A few months ago, I actually stumbled upon this fern moss, but I wasn't quite too sure what it was. So one of my viewers, thank you, actually told me what it was, and I was super stoked. So got some more, it came off so easy, and it's like a pancake. It's flat, it's super green, it's super soft, and e really, really easy to work with. But that's not all we're going to get team, we're going to also get some other low growing uh, terrestrial plantation because I want to mix, you're going to get more than you need and put the stuff back where you found it that you don't need but you want to have plenty to work with so you don't run out of any and you can kind of play with it. Now the hardscape, this is my favourite part, the most creative part of any terrarium enclosure setup build. Super fun, it takes a while but it's super therapeutic. I love doing this stuff, this has become more than just creating ecosystems it's therapy it's a hobby that i love and i love playing with it and creating miniature worlds inside of these things so here i am I'm just going to put the fern side now let's see how i get on So leaf litter is mad underrated, like low-key mad underrated. I found this area in the garden and I thought, man, this would be cool to recreate in the terrarium. So I got some stones, I got some leaf litter, and the idea was to create a little microclimate part of the terrarium. So it's going to be a space where animals, critters, if they were to be in there, they would escape, it would be damp, it would be dark, they would retain moisture, some humidity. Otherwise, let's get more plants in there. Now, I'm not going to give you scientific names. To be fair, I don't even know any of these, but they looked cool. So I grabbed them out of the garden and I planted, moved them around, and let's see how it turns out. Now key is misting. Misting is key at the beginning, at the end, and every day for your terrariums. Regardless of what ecosystem you're creating, what microclimates you need, misting is super key. Especially at the beginning, the early stages, while everything is settling, make sure you mist.
Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm super proud of this. I'm super happy with this. Now, obviously, it needs a more of a wipe down, but it's not finished. I need to add a little pool in there. So, one thing I'm gonna recommend is always have a duckweed culture. You never know when you need duckweed, and it's a super beneficial plant to have, especially if you can make little pools in your microclimates, in your terrariums, in your setups, in whatever you have. But it's super, super, super cool and great to have on hand. All right, the moment you have all been waiting for. The whistling tree frogs I'll be adding into this newly built terrarium slash jar slash ecosystem slash mini world slash whatever you want you want to call it. Now these three are not going to be in here forever, but it's going to be an awesome experiment in this little ecosystem that I've created. Now this guy was super keen. He was basically looking at it, eyeballing it. He wanted to be in it. He wanted to immerse in it already. So let's add these three potatoes in. Now in New Zealand we only have three frogs you can keep in captivity, which is the whistling tree frog, the brown tree frog, originally from southern Australia naturalized in New Zealand. We have the golden bell frog and the southern bell frog, all three species from Australia. I think we're very fortunate to keep these little guys. Now these guys flourish in cold weather, so they're super abundant in the South Island, it gets super cold, they're active all winter, still feeding, beautiful colorations, they go from a cream to a very dark brown. Otherwise guys, I am super stoked with this build now it's obviously going to be a test jar for me for the next three to six months to see how things grow to see how led light impacts the greenery the plantation the misting the humidity the moisture the temp now i put these jars in perfect strategic parts of the home now my disclaimer is is that i don't recommend this for beginner frog keepers in fact go with the exoterra go with the standard reptile enclosure if you have tree frogs or frogs this is for experienced keepers for people who understand microclimates uh, they understand humidity moisture levels space vegetation I have been doing this for a long time and the reason why I do this is because I love building and creating these amazing environments for these animals. I make sure the balances are good and are right and make sense and I also do a lot of testing, trialing and observe every two, three days to make sure that the animals husbandry, they have plenty of enrichment, plenty of stimulus and I play around and generally move things around if I need to and make sure that the animals are welfare and that they're healthy and that they're enjoying and flourishing in the environments. I guess this is more my disclaimer saying that just enjoy the video, get some ideas, get some inspiration. Uh, one thing I did forget to do is add my cleanup crew. So I'm going to go into one of my Slater colonies or isopod colonies and grab three, four of these little guys and throw them in. Yeah, I'm just giving you a little sneak peek into how I do things now obviously this is more of a bird's eye view or just a third person perspective but anyway I'm super proud of this build I'm looking forward to see how it flourishes or changes in the next three or six months otherwise guys I hope you enjoyed it like I said just enjoy the videos get some inspiration I've got a little link below from Josh's frogs uh, link in the description it supports me doesn't cost you anything and it's one of the most amazing uh, frog supplies in the in the US and North America so if you are North American based check it out otherwise thank you for watching stay tuned for the next one